Now that Green Bay is on the clock, there's been an increase in interest for short-term rentals for when the NFL draft rolls into Titletown. Do you want people in your home? What sort of security procedures do you need to take? What sort of things do you need to do to prepare your home? Tonight, we'll try to answer any questions you may have when it comes to sharing your home in 2025. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight at 9. For those looking to take advantage of the large crowds that will be coming to Green Bay for the draft next year, renting out your home is a possibility that could get you several thousand dollars. But as Fox 11's Marlo Lundak reports, it's not as easy as some might think. She spoke with local officials and an experienced renter about the process as she follows the money for us tonight. For Packers crazed fans looking for a place to stay for next year's draft, how about a Packers themed rental house, Caddy Corner from Lambeau Field? When Brett Favre was leaving Green Bay, everybody wanted to come into Green Bay. There was not enough hotel space. So myself and other few owners down the street decided that, you know, we should um, offer accommodations. Debbie Jocks um, has been renting out this property for well over a decade. For the draft, her rates are posted for five grand per night, about double what she charges for Packer game days. I think we're pretty much in line in our pricing. Um, you know, people want to come here and experience this historical event because it'll probably never be in Green Bay again. And while not everyone has a home quite like this, there are still many who are hoping to cash in on the draft too. We certainly saw an uptick in the number of people calling up, asking questions, kind of you know putting your feelers out there is this going to be the right thing for me and do I want to do this? What are the hoops I have to jump through to get there? But it's not as simple as taking pictures of your home and posting them online. First, you need to get a license in Brown County and undergo health and safety inspections. Depending on how long you're looking to rent your property, you may need to get a state license too. Then, you'll need to contact your local municipality. Our rules are different than uh, De Pere's and Alloway's, Green Bay's. Uh, so it's specific to the community. Lastly, making sure you're properly insured. Local officials say following these steps is vital, and it all comes down to safety. And the last thing we want to see anytime draft or any sort of short-term rental is our residents' homes affected and not being able to recover that by being properly insured or licensed. Experienced renters like Jocks agree. Her biggest piece of advice for those thinking about taking the leap into the short-term rental world? Make sure you do a background check. Make sure you know exactly who is staying there. Get a list of every person that is staying there. So in just case something does happen, on, you know, and unfortunate, that you know um, who to contact and all that type of things. In Green Bay, Marlo Lundak, Fox 11 News. And with so many fans expected to attend the draft, there's going, they are going to need other places to stay besides the, those short-term rentals. As you can imagine, the price for a hotel is going to be significantly higher as well during the draft. Fox 11 spoke with the owners of the Astor House today. Nearly all of their rooms are already booked for the week of the draft. The prices range from seven to $800 a night, which is double their normal rate during the Packers regular season. With the NFL set to hold a majority of the hotel rooms in Brown County, those coming into town for the three-day event should be prepared to search elsewhere for a hotel room. You look from Appleton to Oshkosh to Milwaukee to Fond du Lac and Sheboygan and all of these places are going to come together as a hospitality um, community and provide great lodging and options for people coming for the draft. If you'd like more information about lodging and other 2025 draft related items, we have included a link within this story on our website at fox11online.com. Okay, so about 22 years ago, I came across this property and actually it was um, a blessing. So I was looking to get back into the workforce and back then, you know, you look for jobs like in the newspaper, right? So I'm dating myself a little bit here. Anyway, long story short, um, I met with the lady here. I really didn't want to get back in the daycare again. I just had my son and it just worked out so well. We worked on an agreement and I took over her daycare center and she sold it to me. And then I wasn't there shortly after that, I bought the whole house. So we, I ran the daycare center for about 12 years. And then when Brett Favre was leaving Green Bay, Everybody wanted to come into Green Bay. I mean, we used to have Donald Driver park his RV here. You know, we got to know a lot of the Packer players, and I used to work in sports radio. And um, 
anyway, so everyone wanted, there was not enough hotel space. So myself and other few um, um, owners down the street decided that, you know, we should um, offer accommodations, um, you know, for people who wanted to stay. And it worked out well. So a lot of people stayed with us. And it just kind of unfolded from there. We became, you know, the Packer rental properties here in Green Bay. And that's really makes us so unique and different because nobody else has that. Like, we are the only NFL team that has the rental properties like this. I mean, where else can you come and stay that's fully decorated Packer? And you know what's really funny is like 80% of our clientele are the opposing team. We have Packer towels. We have Packer sheets. We have Packer pillows. And they absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Yes. I think everyone is a closet Packer fan and this, you know, they're just too afraid to admit it. But yeah, I, everybody loves the Packers. So cool. And I don't think it's just our team. It's the history, you know? I mean, everybody's bucket list is going to Lambeau Field and just having that opportunity to embrace what, you know, the early tradition of Curly Lambeau and Lombardi, you know, created for us. And look how it's still going on today. It's just yeah, fantastic. So, so cool. Yes. Um, so part of our story is a little bit, too, about, you know, with the announcement of the draft, a lot of, you know, like you mentioned, there's not enough hotel space. I mean, the hotels for a regular game day fill up 90 to 95% in yes. the area. So you multiply that for the draft by, I don't know, maybe two or three times. Right. There's not going to be enough space. So there are a lot of people who are considering for the first time renting out their home, doing short-term rentals to make some extra money and also, you know, meet new people, whatever it might be. Do you have any advice for them when it comes to the process? I know you've been doing it for 12 years, but yeah. what do you remember about it when you first started about the process? What what tips do you have for people just getting into it, even if it's not an amazing right. Packer themed place like right. this? Right, yeah. Uh, and that's okay, too. My advice is that you contact the Brown County um, Public um, Health Department and you get a license. That's first and foremost because from what I know when my licensing agent came in, she said they will be shutting down um, residents who are renting up for the draft. And what's really important about that is we want everyone to come to Green Bay because we have such a welcoming, you know, our, our tradition has always been, you know, one of the things that people take from Green Bay when they go back to their city is what a fantastic place that was. The people were so nice. Do you know what they did? I mean, these are stories that just carry on and on. So, and we, we cherish that. Like that is something that is very important to us. So we don't want someone just to open up their house and for something to happen. You know, we don't want, so we want to keep everyone safe. We want it to be so memorable, epic, you know, it's, it's going to be. And so I would suggest to anyone who is wanting to rent out their house for the draft in 2025 is to contact the Brown County Public Health, get license. It's like $370, something like that, very minimal. And you're gonna make that back with what you're gonna do in renting your place out. They come in, they do a short tour, they're gonna to make sure everything is um, up to code and that type of thing. They're, um, if there's something that needs to be done, you know, they're going to work with you, you get it fixed, and then you're all set and ready to go. So that's your first step. When I first started, I, funny story is, like everything I just loved, you know, because I am just so passionate about our Packers. And I just, I didn't want anyone to mess up our house. So I was like very, very careful of who stayed with us. <laughs> and so um, after that, you know, now we're just like, yeah, we love, we love everyone staying with us. So, um I would just, you know, make sure that you, um, you know, go through and, and um, do a background check. And if you're going through Airbnb or VRBO, you know, they do that for you, which is absolutely nice. But if you're doing it to somebody, you know, you don't know, make sure you do a background check. Make sure you know exactly who is staying there. Get a list of every person that is staying there. So in just case something does happen, on, you know, and unfortunate, that you know um, who to contact and all that type of thing. So, and make sure your insurance is updated. So that's another big one. Yeah, all yeah. great advice. Yeah. I'm sure you've seen a little bit of everything over the years. Oh, for sure. With people staying here. Do you yeah. have any crazy stories about crazy story? Anything? Yes. Oh, my gosh. So our Dallas fans. <laughs> and you know what's nice is everyone that stays here, um, I have this saying that, you know, 
you come in as friends, but you leave as family. And that's truly what we do. So I have like amazing friends down in Dallas that we, they came here, they rented like four or five houses in the neighborhood. Well, guess whose house was the dominant place for the game? Mine. You know how many people we had here? 75 people on our patio, which is absolutely beautiful back there. We have all stamped concrete and a grill and all this type of thing. They brought in these huge, these grill or these boilers. I don't know what they were making. In, um, but yeah, we had like 75 people here for the Dallas Packer game. Um, Green Bay did win, but it was so fantastic. I mean, these guys were so much fun. We had different TV crews here. Um, from all over and they were here going through our house and yeah it was lots of oh fun my gosh. that yeah. is crazy 75 that, people 75 people oh my gosh yes and only one thing got broke yes. hey can't that's complain about that's that. yes I, i'll house. say i've been very very fortunate you know i because i do live next door um you know in the near future we are going to be relocated and my property and next door will also be available to rent out for the draft um we're in the midst of doing that right now and um but, you know, I, I am very, you know, everybody that comes here respects our property. And I've had very good luck with, um, you know, um, going through and finding the right people who stay with us. Yeah. And, you know, we still stay in contact at Christmas and different holidays and that type of thing. And I will say probably about over 50% of my um, business is from repeat customers. Wow. Yeah. That is so cool. Just yeah. getting to know people. Like, that's yes. probably something maybe you didn't even consider when you got into it. But, like, what a great added benefit that is. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Like, we are Packer fans all around the world. We've yeah. had people from Japan, you know, just come and tailgate with us. Because, you know, during, um, for Packer Game Day, we throw a big tailgate party. We um, catered with um, festival foods. We had brats and burgers and that all type of thing. And now we're going to partner with a nonprofit organization. The Lombardi Neighborhood Association will be offering burgers and brats and all kinds of, you know, specialties. So um, people, we're going to open up our, our, um, our game day for food and refreshments again as well. Awesome. So, yeah. Um, I was going to ask. Another question that I thought of, but one that I'm that I was also wanted to ask you was pricing for yeah, and and you don't have to share anything. Oh, for sure, uncomfortable, you know, whatever. Oh, it's all through on um, Airbnb. But w were you like how much more are you or other Airbnbs making because of the draft? Is it a lot more? Is it like are you seeing prices increase because there's so much more demand? Can you share a little bit about that? Right. So I think. I don't think I, I don't think we're out of line in um, asking the prices that we are. If you look at other cities when they had had the draft in their cities, I think we're pretty much in line in our pricing. Um, you know, people want to come here and experience this historical event because it'll probably never be in Green Bay again. And um, I don't think there's a price tag on it. There's not. When you like, when I go to a concert, that type of thing, like I want to be in the front row because. And I, I, you know, you pay that price. And so I think, I don't think we're too far off. I've been talking with other friends and neighbors and that type of thing. And I think it ranges from like 3000 to $5,000 a night, um, somewhere in there. How much more is that compared to a regular Packer game, would you say? Um, <coughs> so in, I would say it's probably... It, it's probably doubled. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Per night, for yeah. sure. Yeah. You know, I and I was thinking the same thing. There are some where that are like outrageously like ten thousand dollars a night. Those are for really big ones too. Right. And when you get to that level, it's like okay, maybe that is a little bit too much. But I think right. everybody kind of knows like this is the spot to be. Right. For an event like that. In our location, you can't beat this location. I mean, we are like right across the street from Lambeau Field, and the best thing about our house, like I was mentioning before, is the fact that. We get to like um, um, interchange with the general public. You know, they come up and they join us, and we meet people from all over the world, which is so exciting. And the other houses, you know, they're just kind of like friends, family, business, that type of thing. Where we, you know, we have the general public walking by our um, our property, and it's really nice to get to know other people from all over, all over, and share and why they're here and that type of thing. I mean. We've had people that um, 
you know, diagnosed with cancer, their last game, come here, you know, because that was on their bucket list. That's one thing they wanted to. So we really get to know a lot of people um, and more intimate than, you know, sometimes some of the other properties do. Yeah. And that's the part that's such a blessing about our under the lights of Lambo and, you know, previously our daycare center here. And God has blessed me with such an opportunity and we're very happy. One last yeah. question. Yep. Uh, for people who, you know, are just getting started in this, you know, for the draft or maybe for the game days this season. Yeah. Um, can you just kind of reiterate how important it is to follow the process when it comes to getting all the licenses and making sure that you're, you know, paying attention to the community that you're in? Because the rules in Green Bay are different from the ones in Ashwaubenon and De Pere right. and Alloway. Like, they're all different. Right. So can you kind of – how important is it for people – to follow all the rules and get everything done that they need to do. Like, it's not as simple as just taking photos and posting online. Correct. It's not just that simple. So you have to keep in mind that um, you worked all your entire life for your house, right? And you're going to entrust it with somebody that's going to come into your home and take care of it. Your personal belongings probably will still be there. So if you don't do a thorough background check on people coming into your home, and who they're having for guests that come into your home, that leaves you wide open, wide open. Um, I would say I would be very careful with um, making sure that your insurance is updated. Talk with them. You don't want to go against you know, the city rules and what they're doing because they will um, come in and they will tell you you need to shut down and people need to leave. They will do that to you because the only thing the whole purpose behind them doing that is to keep people safe. That's, that's, that's the bottom line. It's not about not, them not wanting you to rent out your property because we need everybody's property. But we just need to keep everyone safe and, you know, that type of thing that we don't have a total chaos in our neighborhood or anywhere else. And I think as far as the rules for Schwabenon versus Green Bay, you know, I think, you know, um, as far as like renting out for that week or two weeks, whatever that may be, I think everybody kind of falls in line, you know, with the amount of time that you can rent out your property. So whether it's a Schwaben and Green Bay or any other small community, you know, um, near Green Bay, I think you're going to find that everybody, you know, if you want to rent it for a week, two weeks, whatever that may be, you're going to find that everybody is pretty much on the same level with that. But again, I just want to say it's so important to make sure that you – do a thorough background check of everyone who is staying, you know, if there's going to be, um, if they're going to have a party at the house, if they're, what, what exactly are they going to use the house for? How many people are going to be staying there? Because you don't want to rent it out and have 50 people staying at your house and you come home to like, you know, a lot of things wrecked and ruined and you didn't, you know, do the proper protocol and making sure everything was done. So yeah, Absolutely. it's really important. <laughs> what am I missing? Is there anything? Um, <laughs> Excuse me. Is there anything that you think I've left out? What needs to be added? Parking. Where are people going to park? Good question. I don't know. <laughs> no. We offer parking. Um, we can park up to 25 cars on our lot here. Yes, we've been doing it for a long time. We've got this down to a science. We park 25 cars. I don't know what we are going to charge yet for parking, if we're going to do it for the full week or um, it might be better to do that. I think a question that needs to be addressed is because Green Bay has no overnight parking on the streets, no overnight parking on your lawns. So I think we should probably look at that and maybe let people park overnight on the lawns. Um, maybe overnight parking on the streets. I'm not exactly sure if that's, I don't know. That's up to the city of Green Bay. But um, I think those are questions that need to be addressed. Um, I, I could see maybe parking on the lawns because what if people are staying, you know, here for, you know, they don't get back here till later on and they Uber back to their hotel. I would rather them be safe, get back to their hotel if they, you know, had one too many spirits or so. And then, you know, they're safe and their car is safe and we don't need to issue tickets and, you know. Yeah. We want to keep people safe. So yeah. yeah, that is a really good question. That is definitely something we'll have to look into. I didn't. I'm brand new to the area. Yeah, I just started working here. Where are you from? I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. Oh, nice. So I come from a place where there are no pro teams. Uh -huh. So it's very exciting to live in a place like Green Bay. Where, yeah, you know the stadium's right there. I literally live like three blocks. Do you? Way. So I walk by here all the time when I walk okay. my dogs. Um, 
but so I've never been here for Packer game day. So I'm yeah. just trying to imagine 25 cars on the lawn. I'm, yeah, I'm people tail. We we put a tent up over the driveway. Yeah, and we tailgate and we have tables and chairs and yeah, everybody comes and tailgates. Bring their family. Put it this way: I have seen families grow up. Like I have a family from Waukee, right? Started tailgating here when their kids were probably five, five, six years old. And now they're all like married and have kids. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And I have like all these families, which really, it, it's really kind of um, unique is like we're doing this transition of from our, all the families who had parked in tailgate had tailgated here and they watched their families grow up. It's now I'm, I'm meeting new families with their young kids, bringing their, you know, young kids here and tailgating wow. and yeah. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. We take care of everybody too. That's one of the other things too. I think why, you know, we don't even have to put signs out anymore really because people just call and reserve and because they know like we take care of them, Yeah. whatever they need or, you know, we do. So are That's you our job. Out, are you booked out for the whole week of the draft then? No, not yet. No, we are not. Have you listed yet? We just listed on Airbnb and VRBO. Yeah. So I think our prices may be somewhat, um, you know, someone may say, well, I don't know. Let me just take another yeah. look. Or yeah. A lot of people, I guess, may have said too that, um, but I think my prices are pretty in line. But I don't think, you know, because we've been doing it so long, I think our listing is probably at the bottom of Airbnb and VRBO. So I think our marketing, um, we need to sit down and look at alternative ways of getting our name out there more yeah. and partnering with maybe, you know, other um, businesses or that type of thing yeah. just to get our name out there more.